Hello there again everyone. It's Carol from the Crafty Emporium. Fancy seeing you are you? How are you? Well, I hope you've um, enjoyed the weekend uh, working on your envelope journal. I just want to finish off the odd one or two bits on the front cover. So hopefully this should be quite a short video. Fingers crossed. Um, but then I'm going to do a, a separate video, another one, to just finish off again showing you how to use some of the bits and pieces within the dig digital kit. I always have a problem saying that. I don't think my teeth fit properly. Um, on how you can decorate up some of the pages within the journal. Okay, But today I want to talk to you about finishing off the actual front cover well the cover of the journal okay right put that to one side so one of the things that I said the other day was you know all the bits that you end up cutting off all the little strips and bits and pieces I said to save them now one of the reasons why I said to save them was because they come in handy for bits like this so do you remember I put some um, micropore, couldn't think of the word, some micropore on the cover, on the spine because I said it could be quite weak um, because it's it's only one layer of card and you've inked it up which has weakened the, the creases of the spine a bit. So we've got a half inch spine and what I did was I cut down from those scraps of paper a thin strip slightly less than the half inch um, so that it sits on the spine on the outside and I just glued that in place after I dinked it up. I also put it on the inside of the cover as well um, in, in the on the spine area so that it's got three layers of, of card now to, to just give that spine that little bit of extra support. Okay. Now then, when it comes to the front cover itself, let me just get that one back again a minute and undo ribbons. You'll see that what I did here, me little pearl beads coming off, um, I did a little bit of layering here on this corner to just add that little bit of height and a bit of extra interest. So I'm just going to show you quickly how I did that because it really doesn't take long at all. Oh, sorry, just going back to the spine again a minute. On this one I put ribbon and then I put some lace on the edge. It is up to you if you want to put lace on. Uh, I've chosen not to on this one. But uh, if you want to do that, then you can. And I just put a thin line of glue down this edge here and, and stuck the lace on. It doesn't need to be a really wide lace. Right, sorry, forgot that. Moving on, we'll go on to this bit. Now these tend to have a name, they're called clusters. Um, and it's just bits and pieces that are sort of layered on top of each other, really. Now, one of the things that I used was this and this was a freebie that I've just given away on my um, on my Facebook page so I used the word dreams here but it was just a selection of different words in uh, different fonts so that you can utilize them in these types of projects so in this one I think I might use hope rather than dreams or inspire, oh, inspire might be quite nice yeah i'll use inspire just checking i bought my paper trimmer over with me and yes i have so i'm just going to move that out of the way and i'm going to cut out the word inspire first let me have my brush you're coming into play later so i'm just you probably won't see this i'm just going to be slightly out of shot because of the because I can't get my whole cutter in frame. So I'm just going to trim that word down. In fact, I mean, just move it at the top up there. Mind you, I can't see it then. <laughs> Sorry, you just have to bear with me if you can't see this bit. 
There we go. I'm just going to trim off the, the ends to make it that little bit shorter. And I'm going to pull down the cutter rather than sliding it up. There we go. So that's my word. Inspire. And I'm just going to ink up the edges of that. All right. So this is going to be sort of my starting point, I suppose, for making this cluster. Because then I can build around it. I know what I have forgotten. My lace. You didn't remind me, did you? Oh, I know. Here's some I prepared earlier. Okay. So this edge of the lace here, this, this scalloped edge, I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off. Don't want much. In fact, I'll take all of that, thinking about it. And then I want some of the, the scallop bit at the bottom and some at the top. Okay, so there's my two bits of scallop. That's my word. Now, the other thing that I'm going to use is my cheesecloth, my scrappy bit of cheesecloth. And I've dyed some of it up using my Tim Holtz Distress inks. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But I'm just going to unravel a bit and chop a little bit off. And I want that sitting under the word inspire. Now it might look a bit sort of tatty and horrible, but it just adds that little bit of texture. The other thing that I want to add is a little piece of music paper. And again, this is where all those strips that you end up cutting off and they're left over with, this is where they come in handy for these types of bits. So I'm just going to roughly rip out a little bit of music paper and I'm just going to ink the edge up and this time as you can see I'm just dragging my dibby dabby dooby I feel like bursting into song when I say that dibby dabby dooby but I won't to just ink it up to just make it look even more vintage and I'm going to sit that underneath there so that it's just poking out a little. Okay, and then that will sit underneath there, that will sit underneath there. Okay, so now I need to start gluing them all together. So I'm just going to use my Collal glue to just get it started. So I'm going to lift them two up and put them on there. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it over, and in fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to use my glossy accents just to go through all the layers. It's a much stronger glue is glossy accents, and I'm just going to pop that bit of lace on the top bit, put some more glossy accents on the back, and put that bit of lace on the bottom. Now it doesn't matter if they don't line up, because they're only for effect. In fact, those edges are too straight, so I'm actually just going to cut it at a slight angle. So we don't want it looking too perfect. The glue's not stuck yet. I'm trying to do something when the glue hasn't even stuck. Come on. It does take a while for glossy accents to dry. Yeah, so I'm just going to chop them corners off because I don't want it too square.
might even move you over there. So a tad more glue, Kaz. <coughs> and a slight angle. Now, I'm just going to put a little piece of micropore on the back to hold it all together and whilst I'm waiting for the glue to dry. There we go. So I should now, there we go. And, where's my book? There. And then I can stick that on the edge, just there, just right on the corner. Now the good thing is, because I put that micropore on the back, it will help to keep the glue all together. And I've put a generous amount on. And stick that on there. And then the other thing that I want is a, a little flower, just to break up the shape and to add that tiny touch of colour. Now, in my bag of flowers, I did try the pink and I just felt that the pink was maybe a touch too dark. So I'm going for the green again. Now, you don't have to do what I'm doing. This is just a suggestion as to what you could do. In fact, do I want the flower half underneath? Or do I want it on top? No, I'm going to put it on top. Yeah, put it on top, Carol. And in fact, I think the other thing that I might do is, because this Inspire is overhanging and it's drooping down, I might just put a foam pad. Where's my foam pad? Foam pads are stuck together. Just going to put a couple of foam pads underneath to just support that little bit that's drooping. So this is the bit that it's all a bit trial and error and just having a bit of a play and not being too scared really. So I think a lot of people get scared that they're going to do it wrong. Want any more? Yeah, I want a couple more. <coughs> and so this is why sometimes you can't, when you're doing this sort of stuff, you can't do these videos kind of prepared, really, because you've just got to play and see what you end up with. Put one under there. So that's a little bit more supported now. And then I'm just going to put a bit of my glossy accents on the back of my flower. And sit that on there. So it does take a little while for glossy accents to just set and dry. So that's how that looks. So I'm just going to put that to one side and just leave that to dry a minute whilst I just show you quickly the next bit. Get rid of all these bits. Okay, so I used seam binding as my um, closure in the original one and I just wrapped some around. Now I've got this lovely um, sort of lemony cream double cream sort of color 
um, and I do sell this in my uh, pop-up shop and I've got a variety of different colours. Now you will see sometimes um, this seam binding in, in, in shaded sort of colours and I just wanted to quickly show you how it can be done. So, not that the one that I've done to show you is very shaded but anyway, you'll get the drift. So I'm using my vintage photo and I'm just laying some of the ink onto my piece of plastic. I'm then going to spray it with water. Now the other thing is because I've been inking up on this piece of plastic there should be residue of the the other dye um, distress ink that I've been using as well. And I'm just going to let that sit in there. And then I'm going to turn it over and do it again. Okay, so you can now see how it's picked up a little bit of the colour. Hopefully you can see that. Now, you might end up doing this a couple of times. And spray it with just some water. And again, just dab it in so it's picking up the dye. Now there's no reason why you can't then go and do another colour. So if I went and did my vintage photo, um, sorry, my walnut stain, which is obviously a lot darker than the vintage photo, so it now will start to add another colour to the seam binding. I suppose the knack is, can you see how it's mottled in colour at the moment? So it's gone from that lemony colour, that's the lemony colour, and it's just got hints of the other colour dabbed through it. So I'm just going to, because I don't want it everywhere. But I do want bits of the different parts of the ribbon to be picking up the colour. That bit hasn't got any on. That bit hasn't got any on, so I'll dab a bit in there. Okay. Now then, the next thing that I do is I then scrunch it. Because it's now damp, it creases really easily. And the thing is, when you crease it like that and dry it, it gives this lovely crinkled effect, which makes it look even more vintage. Now the next pass I can't actually show you because the plug that I want to use is actually over there. So, <coughs> excuse me. You could just leave it to dry naturally, um, but if you get a little bit impatient and want it doing quickly, then you use your little dryer. And I use my Ranger Heat It Craft tool. <coughs> now, the reason why I can't plug it in here is I have got plugs at this end of the room. But be very careful when you buy one. Mine came with the American plug. Oopsie. So fortunately for me, the bows that I've got, my music system is an American one. Um, and it was my brother's and it came with the transformer thingy, what's it, where you plug in the American plug, but it's then got an English plug then attached to it. So just watch if you decide to go and buy one of these, whether it's got an English plug or an American plug on the end of it. As I say, it wasn't so much of a hassle for me, but I was a bit, when I opened the box, I was a bit like, oh God, you're joking. Anyway, so plug it in, switch it on. Yes, that's me making that noise, pretending it's drying. Until it's all lovely and dry. And here's some I prepared earlier. <laughs> oh dear, I've got to entertain myself somehow. So, there's my seam binding that I'd already inked up. So, what I'm going to do. I'm going to find my ends. Where's my ends gone? There we go. So I've got my two ends. 
and there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. Got a knot. There we go. So if you imagine that this was a shorter length, you would put the loopy end here and then you'd put those loose bits through the loop, pull it in and then tie your knot. All right, so that's one way. Another way is to just have two loose ends. So if I cut it about there, cut my loop because I want two single pieces. Now the reason why I'm using two is because you get a really nice bow with the two lengths of seam binding. Ooh, missed a bit. Okay, so when you pull it through you separate your loop parts of your bow and you pull them separately so that you've got one long one short and then you can either have your bow on the front or on the side. Okay, the other thing that you could do, because when we undo this, it's actually going to be loose, is you could actually attach a piece of card on the back and put glue on the top of the card and on the bottom of the card on the back of it, and then you stick that on top. So that forms as a bit of a sleeve for the ribbons to be going through, which means then the ribbons will be held in place. Because when I come to use this now, if I just undo those, and take them off completely I could end up losing those whereas if I had a sleeve on the very back of it to just protect those back parts of the ribbons it just helps to hold the ribbons in place and keep them where I want to be so that they're not always continually coming off okay so that's your seam binding that's called now it is an american product it's not readily available here in the uk but as i say i do sell some on my pop-up shop on my facebook group now the last thing i want to cover with the cover is if you like me have got a um inkjet printer if i went and put water on that now if i happen to spill something the ink would actually start to run now what i would then do to prevent that is again it's another range of product and it's the multi medium matte now with any kind of liquid type glue when i put it on here it will make the colors run and i'm going to do it on a separate piece just to show you so with this it's not so liquid it's actually it's quite a firm glue but if I paint that on top you'll see that the background color starts to change where and I'm painting it off on quite roughly but you can see it starts to change the color because the ink is moving you can of course spray it with them um, there's all sorts of sprays that you can now get lacquer sprays wax sprays and it just helps to protect but you can see where it shifted the color a bit from just painting that on but I would use a better brush than that as well but um, and in fact in some instances of I actually do use my finger and I do it in a circular motion because it just helps to even out the the glue a little bit and gives them um, a better coverage but it's just a way of helping them to protect the image on the front so that the color won't run if ever you spill any water or tea a brew 
The other thing that I did on the original as well, and this is where I use the glossy accents. God, I sound like an advert for Ranger, don't I? So, um, is my glossy accents. Now, this glue is great for attaching things like pieces of metal and, and things that you want something slightly more permanent. It's also good for doing little tiny dots on the likes of the stamens of the flowers so here in the daisy and, and here on on the dog rose um to give it's almost like um little mini pearls now i'm not going to do it on here because i want to paint it with my glue first <coughs> to seal it but i'll show you on this one so hopefully you will be able to see can you see i've got some little tiny clear dots on there i'm hoping that you can see those okay and I've also put some on the daisies as well, the centre of the daisies. And again, it just adds that little bit of extra dimension. Okay. So all I can say to you now is go off and go and have a play. If you're still not quite confident, have a practice on a spare bit of card. Because you can always cut that out and, and add it onto another journal later if it works out okay. But just have a play. Don't be afraid. Like I keep saying, oh, it's becoming a bit of a thing, isn't it? It's only glue and paper. So the next video, as I say, I will be talking about some of the decorative pieces inside. And I will be demonstrating using my the other two parts of the digital kit, the roses and daisies one. Um, so we'll be making some pockets and tags and other bits and pieces but I'll show you how to um, go about utilizing some of these parts within the journal itself okay I think that's enough for now and I'll catch you all again in the next one see you later bye